Okay, so welcome back to the Nerdcast. My name is Dan Chesel, and on today's episode, we have none other than the co-hostess with the mostest, <laughs> Chelsea Thompson. Say hello. Hi, guys. And on today's episode of the Nerdcast, we have our very special uh, comedian guest with us today, uh, Liam, Liam Creswick. Say hello. hello. Hi. How's it going, everybody? Right Yay. on. So we have a, a great show just lined up for everyone tonight. So uh, as I switch my, my input jack for my headphones... Uh, <laughs> Yes. Uh, so anyways, yeah, we got a great show for everyone. So yeah, here we are on the Nerdcast. We are, we are a little bit late, but we uh, we had some... Uh... That was my fault, it sorry. Was my fault. It was I, I was late hopping on this evening, trying to get some things done. It's all Ma good. Making sure that the news is uploaded to the Facebook page so all of our loyal listeners and viewers can follow along. <laughs> Awesome. You should, All right. You should so, go check it out. The news is up there. Yes, so you can you can easily follow along. But we always start off our week uh, by asking how everyone's week was. So, uh, Liam, uh, yes. because you are our guest, how was your week? Uh, I, had a, I had a damn good week, actually. It was uh, it was really good. I On Thursday, we uh, recorded a album for the Underdog Comedy Show. Um, mm -hmm. It was a great... Great stand-up show that happens every Thursday at the Underdog, and uh, a label out of Toronto called Comedy Records said, "Hey, this is relevant. This is cool," and uh, recorded like a compilation. So it's like ten different uh, Edmonton comedians. Uh, I don't know if ten or not, but there was a bunch of us. Uh, all basically get a track on the album, um, which was a pretty big deal. So we did the first of that uh, recording, and then we do another recording on Thursday and uh, Wednesday. Uh, not only was my birthday. But more importantly, uh, I won a draft uh, of Magic the Gathering online uh, <laughs> of the new format, and I was I was I, I'm pretty good at draft, but I don't often win like go three and zero. So I don't know how many of your your listeners are Magic fans, but <laughs> three and zero on a draft is is no easy feat, uh, at least for me. So I was I was I felt kind of bad because my my girlfriend had the flu, um, so we didn't really do anything on my birthday. So that was my 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 silver medal was the gold medal of winning some Magic Online drafts. So that was that was the bulk of my week. That's, that's, a, that's, a, week. that's a pretty good week right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, happy belated birthday. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so Chelsea, uh, how was your week? Let's let's go with you. My uh, my my week was pretty good. It was my first week at my new job, um, which was pretty great. Um, Really enjoying getting to know the staff and the kids at the new school that I'm working at. It's going really well. Um, and I ended my week with a super awesome, um, all the kids at the school uh, we went on a ski trip up to Whistler. So we loaded all the kids from the senior school, about 50 kids on the bus at 6 o'clock in the morning and drove up to Whistler and got to ski all day and then come back. So that was really nice. And then I was back in Edmonton. I didn't get a chance to get any friend visits in, so I didn't get a chance to see you and Trina. But it was my mom's, my mom's 60th birthday. Her actual birthday is on Thursday this week, the 10th of March. But my sisters and I conspired to plan a surprise party for her on Saturday night. So I flew into Edmonton Saturday morning and helped my sister set up the party. And then the party was Saturday night. And then hung out with my mom on Sunday and then flew back to Vancouver Sunday night. So yeah, it was a really good week. That's that's okay. You are you are forgiven this one time. I am coming for a friend visit though in like two weeks because school is almost on spring break. So I'm gonna use some spring break time to drive out to Edmonton and have a few days to hang out. Yes. So that's that's the reason why you're getting forgiven, and you're also gonna come and join me next weekend. So or this weekend. Yes. Sorry. This weekend coming up on the twelfth, I'm gonna join you for some Star Wars tabletop RPG. My first nice. introduction. I'm excited. And, uh, yeah, and then I believe not the next Nerdcast on the 14th, but the Nerdcast after that on the 21st, I will be Nerdcasting with you right yeah. next to you in your basement. It's it's going to be exciting. Um, <laughs> it, for, for the next week, uh, for the 14th, we do have a special guest, and it's kind of sad that you can't join us for this this one. 
Because because it's it's Mackie for Pi Day. It's Mackie for Pi Day. So yeah. Mackie, uh, for people who out there who don't know, he's a, a mathematician. Uh, so we figured we'd have and a, a Rubik's mathematician. cube genius and a Rubik's and cube genius. Yeah, he's a just a lightsaber fighting guru amongst other things, and just an all around awesome guy. Yeah. So that is that is coming up next week. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. And we and we'll have a, a pie as well. <laughs> oh yeah, because pie day is coming up. Yeah, yeah. Pi Day, yeah. three point one four. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So my this one of my uh, wife's most favoriteest holidays of the year is uh, Pi Day. Cause pie. And pie. <laughs> oh, and we uh we have another uh podcaster actually watching today, uh Ben Yendall from the Heidi and Way is oh, on yay. our chat. Hi Ben, thanks uh, for tuning hello, in. Hello Ben. He's he's saying the RPG keeps spreading. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh okay. he does he does the the uh a podcast about Star Wars RPG and I uh, I've come to know him uh fairly well over the last little while and uh yeah he's a super nice guy and he got me into this Star he Wars RPG. He was a guest thing. on our show uh a few weeks ago. Yep. Uh in which he spoke at length about the Star Wars RPG. Which got you all pumped to try it out, and now you're hooked, and now yep. you're bringing me into the fold. So thanks, Ben. Yeah, it's all it's uh, all Ben's fault. I I blame him. I'll have to try the Star Wars RPG. I'm uh I actually gonna use this uh, public forum to apologize to my biweekly D and D table for canceling on Sunday for <laughs> not really a good reason. Um, which was <laughs> so I felt bad after, but I'm like I just want a day off. I want to stay at home in my underwear. Uh, <laughs> hey, so guys, no, <laughs> that is a perfectly good reason. So, couch yep, time yeah. in your underpants always good. a perfectly good reason. There's, but there's also always time for biweekly Dungeons and Dragons sessions on a Sunday. Like, you can't play D and D on a Sunday. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, How about you, Dan? How was oh, your week? Yes, that's right. Oh, yeah. I, I still had a week. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so my week was pretty good. Uh, I had on on Thursday, Saturday, 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 Saturday was two birthday parties for my nieces. Uh, they were born a day apart, so it seems like every year they have the same birthday on the same you know weekend. So we actually did two. They were born a day apart, or like a, a couple years and a day apart. No, a day apart. Oh, okay. Good like, twins? No, no. Uh, so I have my sister, who yeah. had a baby, on yeah. on on one day, and then my sister-in-law had a baby uh, on okay. another day, like the the very next day. <laughs> so okay, so there's okay, cool. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Yeah, so I I had to go to my sister-in-law's birthday, uh, or her my that niece had to go to that one in the morning, uh, and she's. Just the cutest little princess that just spins around it all the time. It's great. Was that the flower cake that no, I saw that Trina the, posted? The flower cake was for my sister. Uh, and she, my wife, just made this gorgeous four layer cake with just flowers the icing all over. Oh. All done up as roses. It looked beautiful. It was amazing. It was so amazing. Uh, yeah, so that was that was awesome. Uh, I had lots of cake that day, <laughs> so I mean it's a that's a good day right there. And then on top of it, I got a chance to have some guys over that night, and we played some X-wing. So yeah, that's pretty much all I did all week though. I didn't really do a whole lot other than that. Oh no, wait, no, I did, I did. I went on <laughs> on Friday night. I went snowboarding uh, with my my boy again. Nice. Where I I. Firmly planted my face in the the ice shards. That it was terrible. I you can see right here is a little brutal. Little Ice burn on the though. chin. Yeah. Oh, it's bad. <laughs> that was like my fourth or fifth run down. It's like oh, that sucks now. Yeah. Oh well, it was fun. Anyways, uh, let's just let's just get into our news. Yes. So we've got um kind of a mishmash of news items tonight, which is always fun. Uh, random eclectic bits of weirdness. Actually, our first news item is really cool. Um, if you like modern feats of engineering, the machinery and mechanics behind it always fascinate me. Mm -hmm. um, so our first news item, uh, the link posted to Facebook, uh, is 
uh, from Tech Insider featuring the Zipper Truck, um, which is a new innovation um, in a faster, more stable, more secure way to build tunnels. Um, so there are specially designed um, keystone shaped bricks um, that interlock together with raised pegs on their sides, kind of like the way Legos lock together. Yeah. And the truck drives into place and the bricks are placed on top of it um, in such a way that there's sort of enough space to leave space for the pegs. And then the arch on the truck is angled, so it's higher in the front and lower in the back. So as it moves forward, the pegs that are at the back um, slide together like in the end. and interlock together. Um, and the very end of the video that's on this Facebook link, um, to demonstrate how sturdy and stable, they have a like full-size caterpillar digger like rolling oh, a, over top of this tunnel. It's a full blown like crane type of thing. Yeah. It, it was yeah, that was impressive. But then also, like on one hand it's impressive, but on the other hand, there's literally no structure more sound than an archway. Yes. Like I remember doing that experiment in elementary school where you cut we like cut five blocks of wood that you know, one in the middle, two, five, uh, or three, five and you could stand on it because there's just something about the way all the pressure gets distributed. So yeah, yeah. So it's like it's impressive, but I'm also like, of course, it, that's what it does because that's how that shape works. Well, the great yeah. thing about that's this too, the the great thing about this too is it moves so fast because the bricks interlock. You don't have any kind of like cement or mortar that you have to worry about curing, which yeah. is also good for, especially in places like Canada that have very extreme seasons. You don't have to worry about um, concrete or mortar joints um, cracking or splitting or eroding with freeze and thaw every year um, because the spaces between the bricks will naturally expand and contract. Yeah, no, that... Well, I think the most impressive part about it was the speed, where they're just, like, truck drives through, and then by the time it's out, there's a bridge. Yeah, I think like, the the captions in the video said they can build a uh, half a mile or a quarter of a mile worth of tunnel in, like, eight hours or something, in an eight-hour day. That's a work day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty... That's a just a neat little... Like who? Like why wouldn't we think thought of this earlier? Well, that and the does seem so simple. Today. Yeah, that seems so simple that you're kind of like that's been on the table this whole time. Like no one's thought about it before now because it's other. I mean, the most the newest technology that it's using is a truck, and those have been around since you know Ford truck got to and work. Some rollers. <laughs> yeah. So, I just now I'm just trying to think like what other. Sort of like like bri like is there is there some way we can build like a gun that shoots a bridge across a body <laughs> of water like a grappling hook but it's a whole bridge or wait that's a stupid idea but I just had a really good idea you, the same thing but with a boat yeah. you drive the boat down the river and then it's got the like shape of the bridge I bet I'm that's how they build bridges it. that's probably how they build bridges now that they think about it. I, I think it depends on the type of bridge, whether it's a suspension bridge or whether it's a bridge where they're drilling pilings into the water. Well, I'm sure boats are involved in bridge building one way or another. That was, yeah, as I was saying that, I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> probably been done. <laughs> I'm going to stick with my gun idea. <laughs> my, gra my grappling hook bridge Pew, pew, insta-bridge. Well, from the very grand scale of engineering to a slightly smaller scale of engineering. Oh, no, this is, this is a feat of engineering butt. I can get behind. Engineering <laughs> for your butt. Uh, so presently it is a prototype um, of a toilet seat with a built-in scale. So originally I believe the prototype was built specifically with... Um, medical weight loss in mind to be used in hospitals. So with patients undergoing gastric bypass surgery, etc., where like super strict monitoring of your weight is needed. Um, but as the article so amazingly points out, if it makes it to mass production and like sale for public consumption, um, 
people are the lowest common denominators out there who love poop jokes. Me and no, <laughs> this this feels like the question that's been waiting to be answered because I've heard so many like How I know there's people out there play? who've no, but there's no one else ever done that where you stand <laughs> on a scale and then you take Before, a poo. Yeah. And then after. And then you step on the scale after. It's like I've done it a couple times. It never it's never enough to notice. You need like a really choice digital scale Accurate. to get it. So this is fulfilling just such a morbid curiosity I've always had. <laughs> and it's stylish. It is like a really nice the sleek mahogany. Wood, natural yeah. wood look. Yeah. It's also a classy looking toilet seat. <laughs> it is it is very nice. Uh yeah, I. I mean, I just, the other I just side. I know of, what my weight is all the time, so I don't know. <laughs> if we go back to practical applications, aside from weight loss, it would also probably be really useful in like long-term care facilities or seniors' homes, where weight gain is also a a concern with older yeah. individuals getting too thin. So yeah, but I mean. Pfft, Practical uses. Who cares about those <laughs> when you can find out the difference? Actually, you know what? You know, the only thing you, that this is missing is Wi-Fi. Pre-poop and post-poop. <laughs> like, like a Fitbit, it'll tweet it for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it should sync up to Twitter. <laughs> or actually, you know what I was thinking? So you know how when you <laughs> it'll do the before and after? John S yeah. just had a half-pound BM. Way to go, John! <laughs> like a Fitbit, it just keeps track. I was thinking, though, you know when you stand on a scale, and if you stand still, you find out what your weight is, but if you jostle around, it goes up and down. This is kind of gross, but, like, it's one thing to know when you start and then when you're done, but if you're taking, like, a distinctively hard, like, raucous poo, you can watch the the number go, like, up and down, like, when you, when you stand up. Like, if you, like, rip a big fart, you'll be able to see it... Shake from the motion. Sorry, that was yeah. That was... Toilet humor never know, gets right? old. I want well, one like this, now. this reminds me a lot of the squatty potty too. Yes, just... my sister has a squatty potty, and their promotional, their like commercial video for it is hilarious. The unicorn. The unicorn thing. That's such good marketing because I I read about the squatty potty months before the, the that commercial came out, and. It was. It seems like a hard sell, and I think the best way to sell something like this is just to go full blown absurd. We know what we're selling. There's good science behind it, but yeah. also here's like Everybody a unicorn. It's kind of gross, but there's a lot of humor in it, which is also why I love speaking of another product to do with poo that had an amazing commercial campaign, um, poopery. <laughs> Have either of you heard of no. and or seen the commercial for Poopery? All right, Liam. So if you liked the unicorn commercial for the Squatty Potty, when we're done this evening, you need to Google yourself the Poopery commercial. Um, so it's a product designed to spray in the toilet bowl before you go. Um, and it's made with like essential oils and stuff that creates a, a like a film or a yeah. layer on top of the that. water. Yeah. And so when it stuff plops in the water, it goes underneath the film and that traps the odor, but then it releases the like essential oil scent. Oh, um, wow. And, uh, my roommate had some and I've used it and it does work really well. It smells great, but their commercial is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that one. That's, well, that's, I'm looking, I'm trying to look it up now to give you guys the link, but years and years ago, is not as this isn't nearly as good as as uh, poop puri. Uh, in fact, we were probably taking it to the lowest common denominator. But there was this viral video of these guys. Their whole business model. This would have been like circa 2008. Was to sell a stop sign that just said the word poop on it instead of stop. And it was just a website dedicated to just that. And I thought it was super hilarious in concept. And years and years ago, my brother got it for me for my birthday. I, I don't know how I, how many people are actually watching live, but give me three, <laughs> two, one. I just moved, so it's in a pile of decorations. <laughs> uh, I I love how 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 very close that was to you. 
Like, it was, was like that's why that I, I wouldn't have brought it up if it wasn't in arm's reach. <laughs> and I'm embarrassed to say that I have a stop sign that says "poop" in front of instead of "stop" within arm's reach of me, apparently at all times. As far as the northern northern nerd podcast listener audience is concerned, this is in my pocket um, all the time. You carry it around time. with you. No, you have I, a special like keychain. <laughs> I, I just moved, and there's a big pile of things that are going to go up on the wall behind me. Um, but let's pretend it was on my person. <laughs> I, I'm trying to Google it, though. I cannot find the... I don't think... Uh, I guess the business flopped. Who would have thought? <laughs> the business folded. Um, <laughs> so, anyway. I, if you can find it, tweet it at me, because I can't find it anymore. But it was just these guys being like, Poop sign! It's a sentence that says poop! Poop sign! And they just they crushed it on the, on the video. <laughs> so. It sold it, so like you had to yeah. buy it. Like, but my my brother bought one for me, but he bought <laughs> one. So. That's awesome. Well, moving on from poop humor to video game humor, um, our Do last we news have item. To... No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Some of the it's pretty amazingly sarcastic some of the lines in this oh, video. This. So our next news item Dan uh, has lovingly posted is um, a video of some in-game play um, from... Is this from the new one? Yeah, it looks like yeah. the new one. Forthcoming. So from the, from yep. the new portal, um, some gameplay from inside Aperture Labs. Um, and mostly you just need to watch the clip for the sarcastic writing that they've created for the in-game AI um, directing you how to use <laughs> some of the in-game tools. Um, <laughs> yeah, it really does deserve a watch if only for the writing because uh, it's glorious and sarcastic and amazing. Yeah. Yes. I, 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 love, uh, I, I love Portal. And I and I just love the 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 humor that it has, and and this is the VR like sort of, I don't know if it's a version or if they're just they're coming out with a whole new uh, uh, portal game, which is also exciting on on its own merit. Uh, but yes, like the the humor that they have of it, like just it's, it's hilarious. It's just it's great. brilliant. It's the funniest. It might pro I honestly might be my portal might be my favorite game. I was. Really excited when you sent that, and then was embarrassed that I hadn't known that they were making a new one until <laughs> 45 minutes ago. Um, given that, I would honestly say like Portal is my all-time favorite game. It's the humor is just so on point, clever, and what a what a unique way to make a puzzle out of a first-person shooter. Yeah, and then this I don't know if you guys got the same vibe I did from this one, but it's. They're going. It's going to be the same humor and the same pace as the last two Portal games, but you're you're not playing with a portal. You're doing some other kind of clever, some other kind of clever puzzle mechanic. Which um, I couldn't really quite suss it out, but it seemed to be like robot building or yeah. I don't know. What did you guys get from it? Yeah, at, at one point he, he was uh, asked to rebuild a, a robot. And uh, it's like, yeah, don't worry. Take your time. You got 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it when it all falls apart. Like the, the player is, you know, solving this puzzle and building this thing, and then something <laughs> happens, and it just goes clothunk. And it's funny to watch all these things fall, and also in true um, Valve fashion, the attention to detail. There are so many tiny little individual parts, just from a programming and animation standpoint, I was blown away that it, you're, you're, it's, there's a lot of little robot parts that this guy had to pick up off the ground. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I'm very, I'm very excited to try this out, that's for sure. It's going to be good. Yeah. I love Portal. Portal is great. Woo! And that's the news. That's it. We did it. We made it. Now on to the best part of the show, our very special guest. We, we get to talk about you, Liam. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> it's my favorite subject. Yeah. <laughs> so, Liam, uh, first off, 
we like to ask, why are you on our show? Like, what <laughs> what makes it that you can be on our on the Nerdcast? Um, what are you What are you nerdy about? Yes. What are What, what am I nerdy your, about? Yes. Um. Oh, quite, quite magic. Many. <laughs> well, no, that's if that's that's number one with a uh-huh. bullet. To be honest, um, that's number. I am way too into magic. It is my third love. It is my my beautiful girlfriend and my friends and family. Number one. Uh, comedy. Number two. Magic the Gathering number three. It's <laughs> it's the best game ever conceived, and I love a lot of uh, you know tabletop games and and board games. But I if you you give me a ga- any game of Magic over any board game any day of the week, I just I'm I'm obsessed with it. I'm in fact I kind of feel like you know, I told you at the top there I won a, I won a draft uh, on Wednesday and. There's a there's a podcast out of Seattle called Limited Resources where they talk about um, <laughs> just it is a podcast. My my girlfriend rolls her eyes every time she hears me listen to it. It's a podcast not just about magic, but specifically drafting magic. Uh, and they <laughs> it's, it brings it down to even just a specific part of the magic. Yeah, game. one format. It'd be like it'd be like it's not just a poker podcast. It's a Texas Hold'em podcast. Um. That's the best way I can analogy I can make. But they have a they have a clan. They have a bunch of uh, people who play Magic Online together. And I got added to that group. I didn't have to do anything. It's pretty easy to join. But I, I got added to the clan. Didn't talk to anyone. hadn't hadn't interacted with anyone. Just went and did. And that's when I won that draft. So I feel like I got just just by being in the same group as these people who take it super seriously. I got good mojo, and <laughs> that's what rock, rocketed me to the first place. With my my killer, if you have any listeners who like magic, um, uh, red blue surge deck surge deck in Oath of the Gate Watch. So I'll leave it at that. I won't. I love you guys, are <laughs> magic people. But there was uh, there was supposed to be a bi- a big tournament this weekend, I believe. Uh, we had it up on yes, our, there was our, a the, our calendar. Yeah, there was one in Edmonton. Um, I forget where I got I. I do play in, in stores and things, but uh, last time I tried to go to a competitive event, it was a couple weeks ago here in Edmonton, and it was, a, you know, to no one's fault, hindsight's twenty twenty, but it was a little bit mismanaged, and the, it was, it was first of all, it was hell, they overbooked it, so the venue only held 100 people, and about 200 people wanted to show up. Wow. Um, oh. so, this, so they had to, and there was, normally a lot of these events have uh, pre-registration, this one didn't, so it was literally first come, first serve. So people were getting turned away, which is a disappointment. But also, they held it in a Royal Canadian Legion. So out front of the Legion, there's these two old ladies losing their minds, like yelling about dudes coming in wearing hats and with outside food or drink. And it was just, I had like I had to laugh. I got turned away, whatever. Um, but I, I just had to laugh because he's like, like, it's a Legion. Don't they teach you kids anything? Take your hat off. Uh, just losing their minds. So uh, hopefully the one that was this weekend uh, went a little better than that one did. Yeah, this one was supposed to be a, a big tournament that was happening. I think, uh, oh, man, I can't remember who it was. Uh, I know Variant Edition was part of it, and uh, I can't remember who was else was. It was a it was a joint one. Yes, Anyways. it was. Uh, it was a. I believe it was a. Um, seriously, if I if I talk too much about magic, just tell me shut up. But we can do this all night. Never, um, Liam. That's what this yeah. show is for. It's all about excellent. <laughs> this is the forum um, port. Because they do not like this much magic talk on the quick and slow comedy show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was. Uh, I think it was. Yeah, it was a, a pre PTQ, which would be a qualifier to qualify for a tournament. Uh, and it was co-hosted, I believe, and, and I, I someone might need to, to fact check this, but uh, Red Claw Gaming and Variant Edition That's um, awesome. did yep. it together. Yeah, so um, Variant Edition, those guys are, are good buddies of mine. I, I highly recommend if you need anything, magic or comic books, uh, I will I will plug them just by Hit way them of them up. being good guys. Yeah. yeah, they're good people, and they have podcasters meet up. I don't know if you guys have ever. Yes, we've uh, I just I, went to one not too long ago. I've I've been going to every one except for I missed the first one. I missed the first one and I've yeah. been going to all the other ones. They yeah. they're great. I think that's but a yeah, good, very, that's a really good very idea. But yeah, very very tradition is amazing. Uh Brandon Shantz, 
uh, he's he's an awesome guy. Uh, yeah, it was crazy actually. Him and uh, him and I have been friends in Edmonton here for about two or three years, um, but we have known each other via the internet. Uh, you want to talk about a small <laughs> world? Uh, for about ten years, we when I was I'm I'm 29. When I was like 18, I wrote reviews of individual like monthly issued comic books for a website called Comic Stream. Uh, when I was like just in like college and just just out of college, uh, and so did this dude from Red Deer named Brandon Chats. And <laughs> then years later, I'm strolling to to one of the comic book stores he's working in, and I'm or he's or I think he saw me at a at a comedy show or something. But anyway, I'm like, you're the you're the guy from Comic Stream. You're the guy from Comic Stream. Oh my god, it's a small world. So yeah, it's, it's crazy how how nerds will find a way. They will. They always. Yes, find we a way. will. They always find a way. <laughs> yeah, so, it's a it's a small world that we all live in. I'm finding that out. <laughs> yeah. Also, so, I've I've spent a good part of my my stand up comedy career trying to get my Google search results to be about my comedy and not a post I made in a comic book forum in like 2006 <laughs> with a bunch of superhero wallpapers I made at 18 years old with nothing better to do on an afternoon. <laughs> So for the longest time, the first thing that would come up would be, oh, here's some wallpapers that I made. Um, so now it's hopefully it's for comedy. So. Now now I'm going to go search for this. Yes, <laughs> get it. Of comedy. Yeah. So we, uh, we have explored your third love, but mm -hmm. your second love, comedy. Sweet uh, lady comedy. Sweet lady comedy. So um, how long have you been doing stand-up? Um, is today Mark? Oh, uh, actually, I only I only looked this up because uh, I was I was feeling so confident and and, and stoked about doing that album. Uh, um, the f I've been doing this since the first Monday in September, two thousand nine, which would have been a, I think I looked it up as a seventh. So it's been six and a half years almost to the day. Wow. So, um, yeah, and I've got a decent amount to show for it. Probably, probably could stand to have more, but I'm pretty proud of where I'm at so far, six years in, six and a half years in. So where are some of the places that you've uh, you've, you've done your comedy in? Oh, anywhere they will let me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, I mean, there's amazing comedy that happens here in Edmonton, um, I, but I've also done, I've... I, I did my own show at, at both Happy Harbor Comics uh, and was invited to do a show at Warp One uh, on White Ave there. And then I was also, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I don't know what your guys' relationship with other podcasts in the city are, but I was also part of uh, a live episode of The Unknown Studio at Happy Harbor uh, years ago. I've done poetry jams. I travel all over North, not like, I say all over Canada, but... BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan. Um, you can yeah. you can kind of you can judge a comedy career by like the span from your home base that you travel. And right now I'm province adjacent, famous. <laughs> uh, yeah. Shabby. Yeah. Uh, when you guys did the the what's it called the uh, unknown studio studio one I remember uh, yeah. listening to that one long long ago I, oh, I yeah. used to listen to the unknown studio like quite a bit until they they they're now canceled which is sad yeah but yeah it's a uh, they were they were a great Edmonton local podcast to, to listen to for sure so yeah it was no, good. I, though I, I, I listened back to that episode later and realized I started my set by saying, oh, guys, it's so good to be here. I am just tickled pink to be here. And I never said that in life or on stage. Uh, I don't know where tickled pink came from, but it is now on record forever that those words have come out of my mouth. <laughs> so it was a good set otherwise, but uh, I, I regret starting my set off by saying I was tickled pink to be there. I... <laughs> One of the few regrets I have in life. <laughs> you can never take that back. No. Nope. So, where are some of the maybe the oddest uh, places you've you've done your show at? Oh man, that's a good question. Um, I I did a show in Lumsden, Saskatchewan, uh, last Christmas, uh, like Christmas 2014, uh, at a venue called the Lumsden Hotel and Steak Pit. <laughs> 
<laughs> where in the summertime there was a bit in the middle of this bar was like a big I can't remember if it was in the middle of the bar or like just outside, but I feel like there was definitely pageantry going on inside the venue. Um, where during the summer they would roast steaks. I think it was outside, but they had anyway. They would roast steaks over an open fire like you would a hot dog or a marshmallow. <laughs> like as only Saskatchewan can. Um, but then I I just made me think of that that uh scene in Indiana Jones when like he's looking down the hole, just going like, Oh steaks. Why did it have to be <laughs> steaks? He's looking at a pair of steaks. <laughs> Uh, so that was a weird one. I there's some it's it's a long way to the top sometimes. Like you have to, I mean you have to play some some odd places. Like I've done, I performed for about. There used to be a, a comedy club in Sherwood Park that went under, or not went under. It just like it wasn't working out. It wasn't like mismanagement or anything. But they just they stopped functioning after a while. But it wasn't like a one day they're open, tomorrow they're closed. It was like a slow decline. So at one point they had us, instead of in the comedy club, because there was some sort of liquor license issue, we were in the Indian restaurant next door. <laughs> and so the late, the because like a lot of comedy clubs, they'll do an early show at like 8 o'clock and a late show at 10.30. The 10.30 late show on the Friday or Saturday was for about five people in front of, not on a stage, not with any kind of lighting, like in front of an empty Indian food buffet. <laughs> Just, so that was just stand by the buffet. Just stand by the we're buffet not, and tell jokes. Yeah, we're, we're not going to give you a microphone or anything either. We're just going to get you to stand I a, here. I, I had a mic, but I also the audience of five people were five people at a basic restaurant table looking at me like the mo the saddest version of American Idol you've ever seen. <laughs> They're like, I just wanted some Indian food. No what buffet's closed, guy? but we've got comedy. <laughs> so. That's awesome. So, so yeah, whenever I get to perform for you know like like big audiences, like I've uh, I've been very lucky. I got invited to to perform at the Yeggies, the the Edmonton Twitter Awards. Nice, yeah. Um, so when I get to perform at those things, I'm so grateful because I've also been in front of four people at an Indian food buffet. So <laughs> you you know where you've been, and you yeah. know where. Yeah. <laughs> Started at the bottom, and now the gang's all here, or whatever that Drake's lyric is. So, so well, just because you mentioned it earlier, your six-and-a-half-year anniversary, mm -hmm. um, the very first show you ever did, where was it at? What was the crowd like? Oh, that, um, I what remember it. Set? I remember it pretty vividly. It was the comic strip in West Edmonton Mall. They, uh... Their amateur nights are now on Tuesdays, but they used to be on Mondays, and that's why I can go back and look and be like, oh, I know it was the first Monday of every month. Or sorry, it was the first Monday of September 2009 because the guy who ran it at the time would put all the brand new people on that first Monday. It was just sort of his way of being like, here's your, like, out of the out of the pan into the fire or whatever the expression is. Um, yeah, yeah. But I remember... I mean, I don't know, I'm not going to be like, oh, I did great, I hit the ground running, but I remember, because I had gone and watched a bunch of other amateur shows around town before I tried it, and was like, oh, some people are crazy and delusional. And I was like, so no one was allowed to come, like, like a lot of times you'll when I do shows now, and if there's someone who it's their first time, they've brought all their friends, they've brought all their family, it's a big to-do, and... I was like, no, no one is allowed to see me because if I <laughs> suck, then I can just, you know, walk away. I did, you know, no one will know. But And then if I feel like I did a good job, then I'll start pursuing it. And it went well enough for me to call the girl I was with at the time. I, I will, like, remember this moment for the rest of my life. Walking through a then-closed West Edmonton Mall being like, I want to do this forever. This is what I'm doing for the rest of my life, period. And that was after one after one set, so... That uh, that sounds like my uh, friend who uh, we we did our first um, uh, Star Wars RPG, and he's like, I want to do this forever. This is great. <laughs> he yeah. he comes, he goes home. He's like, we did this and this and this, and my, and his wife is just like, it is two o'clock in the morning. Go to bed. <laughs> it's man, it's crazy how some like hobbies and things like that. I mean, because that's like I said, I'm I'm obsessed with magic. 
it gets in your head. It it when you can combine the imagination and fantasy that exists in things like like high fantasy like magic or Star Wars and combine it with a thing that you can get good at or the thing that has some sort of like mental complexity, you put those two things together and it's it'll capture it's your imagination, yeah. right? It's addictive. It, it's addictive, right? More yeah. more than say a Sudoku puzzle and a Star Wars novel, you put them together and it's like put it in my arm like you hit me with a hit me with another shot. Mainline me. Yeah, mainline me. <laughs> I I love I love Star Wars, right? And yeah. for me to be able to just even play in that world. Uh, exactly. I can't I can't turn that down. It's it's too good. Yep. It's too good of an opportunity. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm very excited to do this. But yeah, anyways, uh <laughs> go back to your uh yeah. your, So your what what were the seeds? Where did they, you know, so your first kick at the can six and a half mm-hmm. years ago but I imagine the like well that might be interesting or what if I you know I'm going to just oh that's funny let me just jot it down all of the little like meh, 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 came from somewhere some point started at you know where where did it start bubbling up from you know as, as much as I can vividly remember the first time I went on stage I couldn't tell you what possessed me <laughs> to go, like, there was just one day I was sitting at work, and on my lunch break, I just called around, I was like, do you guys have an amateur night? Do you guys do, you guys do amateur night? Uh, I just called around, but I couldn't, I don't know how long I'd been thinking about it, or, or where, it was literally just one day, I was, it was I worked in Indigo, in the bookstore, and I'm sitting in the back, having my lunch, and I'm like, I just googled comedy clubs in Edmonton, I was like, do you guys have amateur night? And thought I'd give it a try, but I couldn't tell you where that came from, beyond... I don't know, just a lifelong fan of of cartoons and comedy, and I mean, I mean, like I guess, like I said, I wrote for that uh, uh, comic stream, the 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 comic book reviews that Brandon and I used to write, or I wrote for the Nate newspaper when I went to Nate, and I it, I tried to make them funny and entertaining, and I think it was just like I didn't have an outlet at the time to like mm-hmm. a blog or a, a thing to do, and was like, well, that's a that's a thing I could go do, and unlike blogging or, or newspaper writing it stuck as like oh I want to do this forever and not just as a hobby so I hope that answers your question yeah absolutely so now your sets that you do now tell us a little bit about like are you really like do you really workshop an idea write it down edit it re-edit it or do you just kind of fly by the seat of your pants? Are you more observational humor? Are you more, you know, give us a sense of what what it's like when you get up on stage. Um, yeah, I mean, it uh, it depends where you're seeing me, right? Uh, like, there's a comedy show at the Druid every Sunday um, that's been going for about as long as I've been doing stand-up, and that's a great place to, where I'll, you'll, you see me there, I'm likely trying something new, I'm, I'm, because it's a full-blown open, open mic. Like, you can both go on next week if you want. It, everybody gets on. <laughs> um, so you'll see a lot of pros come through or semi-professionals or, or aspiring professionals trying new material there. Um, and I usually will just, like, I write it down on my phone. Like, if I'm walking around and I have a funny idea, I'll just, I have a little, uh, a never note list going in my phone of, it's a, one says joke ideas, one says sketch ideas, and one says Magic the Gathering decks. Uh, <laughs> and those are my three. Um, yes. <laughs> and uh, anytime I have an idea for any one of those three things, I, I just sort of jot it down. And then next time I go on stage, I sort of... I, when I started, it was much more methodical. Like, I'd write it, you know, write it all out word for word or know exactly where the beats are, but... I mean, I, tr- I was on the Druid show last night. I tried a new joke where I was like, well, I'm going to go up and make fun of the, the bronze whale they brought back to the West Edmonton Mall. And I kind of knew where I wanted to go with it, but I just sort of improv it a little bit. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then in terms of material, a lot of observational stuff. I try to work in nerdy stuff where I can, uh, and that's not, that's not even to, like, pander to your audience or anything. I genuinely... Um, if I like, if I can work uh, a Doctor Who reference into a joke, I'm gonna <laughs> do my best to do it. You know what I mean? 
Um, but also, when I'm in the Lumsden Hotel and Steak Pit, they might not want to hear me go on about Pokemon for 20 minutes. So I've got <laughs> some, I've got some stuff that's a little more relatable, like driving or or sex or your your typical um, stand up topics that you've probably heard a lot of people have there have done one way or another. So awesome. That was actually the really exciting thing about that the the underdog. The underdog uh, comedy the show that we did on Thursday, the recording. Yeah. That's the, that's such a hip room. It's full of like young college white av people, so I can get away with a lot of that kind of material. And now I have that on record. That when I go to the Lumsden Hotel and Steak Pit, I have something to sell after the show. That's a little bit more genuinely me and less like, oh, I'm being I've been I've been paid to drive all the way to Regina to put on a show for, like, a corporate Christmas party, I got to deliver the goods, as opposed to, like, go up and, and stroke my ego and, and talk about Pokemon. So I can, once those people, once I'm done with that show, I can be like, oh, and also here's something a little more genuine. Here's a little more of me, so. Hi. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I want to know a little bit more about sort of the, the community that's uh, in this city. How do you, how do you feel about the, the creative atmosphere that's out here? Um, I, I guess, like, I love it. I think this city is full of incredible creative people, not just in comedy, music, dance, podcasting. The fact that we run podcast meetups, I think, is is pretty remarkable. Um, but this is also, like, the only city I've known. I grew up here. I've, I've lived here my whole life. And it would be naive to think that you know, Calgary doesn't have something just as exciting going on, or Taiwan doesn't have something just as exciting going on. Um, and I'm definitely aware that the rest of the world could kind of give a rat's butt about <laughs> what we're doing here in Edmonton. So I'm, I'm, I am. So does that make sense? Like, yep. I'm, I love everything that's around me and all the opportunities that I've gotten in this city, and I've, I've lived a life. I, I am pretty proud of and gotten to do, like, the Yeggies. Like, that's always one of my go-to things. I'm like, I got to be on the Twitter awards for Edmonton, and it was in the, it was, like, a couple hundred people, like, 500-plus people, and, and, you know, executives from businesses who had sponsored this event. Like, it's, I got to play award. My friend, uh, I, I brought my girlfriend last year, but the year before, my girlfriend was out of town, so I brought my friend Jamie of, of the Quick and Slow Comedy Show, and mm -hmm. she called it Twitter, Twitter Prom. Uh, <laughs> which is... And I'm like, I got to go to Twitter prom, but also we're in Edmonton, and who cares? So it's kind of, it's this weird thing where I, I'm, I'm grateful for all the people and all the things that go on in the city, but I try not to, like, let it go to my head, like, we're, like, any of us are doing anything so important and so relevant, and so, you know, so. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. I, I'm finding that uh, over the next, like the last few years especially, that uh, the, sort of the community has been expanding and growing. Uh, obviously, it's not to the scale of some of the other big cities out there, but I, I, I think there's a, a definitely a, a, a place where there's a lot of creative people in the city anyways that are mm -hmm. doing some amazing stuff. Yeah, I think because we're so far north, we do have a little bit, like, maybe instead of, you know, a city in America that's of a comparable size to Edmonton, I think we, we might actually have a lot more going on just because we're so far north. Like, bands don't come through as often, so our mus our local music scene is going to flourish. Our, you know, big-name comedians or plays don't come through, so our theater scene is going to flourish just mm -hmm. by way of having to make our own fun being in the middle of nowhere. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't know, I, I don't know any American cities about the same size of us, but I feel like, I'm just going to pull this out of my butt, maybe it's St. Louis, I don't know how big St. Louis is, but that seems, <laughs> that seems like a good guess. I would, I would stack our comedy, theater, music, podcast, any kind of art scene up against uh, a city of comparable size, and I think, uh, I think we've got a little more going on just by way of being isolated. All right, so Chelsea, you got anything else? Mm, no, not that I can think of. I've uh, it's been, yeah, listening to you chat about 
the things that really get you going. That's what we love. We love. Well, I hope so. Guests. I feel. I always. I always get self conscious on podcasts because I. <laughs> I don't always. I don't always film like like good good comedy advice is to film your sets and watch it back and learn and I. A bore watching myself. I get so angry at my, my body image and at the way I stand, the way I move my hands. But I love being on podcasts because, lordy Lou, do I like the sound of my own voice. Um, <laughs> so I, I sometimes catch myself sort of rambling, as I'm sure I'm doing right now. Uh, but I, I appreciate the, the soapbox uh, to, to... That's, that's essentially yeah. what we're here for, right? Right we yeah. we love having people on from the community who are clearly so fired up about whatever it is that they happen to love, whatever their niche in the nerd umbrella happens to be. We so you know, thank you so and, much for coming on included and included in that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Thank you very much for having me. I think what you guys do is really cool, and the the whole. I mean. What you guys do is really great. The whole Edmonton podcast scene, I think, is is a, a really exciting opportunity for people to sort of share and spread. And I, I yeah, just I, I I love what you guys do. Um, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, can you tell us where we can find you all over the web? Yeah, I um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in a quick plug here. I'm currently taking a little time to worry about my, my own stand-up career, but for, for the last four years, I have been a part of a fantastic improv show called Yeg D&D. It's a Dungeons & Dragons improv show. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have heard of it or, or anything, but um, oh, yeah. they're, they're still going strong. They, they are doing just fine without me, which is exciting to see. I, not that there was any doubt. Um, but they, they've got they a show... They retweeted our, our show today as well. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I highly they've got shows at the PCL Studios here in Edmonton and Avalon Knights RPG Days. I think once a month Avalon Knights, which is a, an RPG store here in the city. Yeah, so um, last weekend, I, th I think it was last weekend. Yeah, well, you, I think I was Anyways, listening to I was, the, the Beam Dog episode. You were there. Yeah, I was there. So, yeah. yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, but I didn't I didn't uh, stick around for the the Yag D&D thing. Um, I kind of want to actually catch them one day because I've I've been dying to actually see them live. Yeah, they do. They do great work, and I, I had a great four years with them. I will be back sooner rather than later, but I just wanted to. We'll take a little me time. Little little me time. I like having my Tuesdays free again. To, <laughs> so, um, and then also you can uh, find me at at Liam Kreswick on Twitter. Um, don't go to liamkreswick.com. I haven't updated it in a long time. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna set up a Squarespace soon, but for the time being, just Twitter is where to catch me. Uh, or um, the Debutantes. I have a sketch comedy group called The Debutantes and uh, their YouTube channel. If you put in Debutantes Sketch into YouTube, our YouTube channel comes up with... We've got about five or six video sketches, a couple audio sketches that I'm really proud of. So Those would be the two. Awesome. Well, uh, where can people find you like in real life? Like, Is there a show that you're coming up? When, uh, when does this podcast uh, drop? Do we Today. know? Today? Right. Oh, Right yeah, now. Right well, I know we're doing it live. I don't know if you tinker with no, it after. I, you know, I, cut down my cut down my rambling. Save ourselves forty five minutes. Nope. Uh, no. This is um, the way. That's it, the best way part. It is, it's the way it goes. <laughs> uh, then, then I would love everyone to come out to the Underdog this Thursday. Uh, for this, uh, we're do, we, we're doing the the album taping last week, but we we get two takes. So next week we're we're doing it all again. So that'd be uh, Thursday. Four days from now. Um, the ninth. Tenth. 10th, yeah, on the 10th, uh, Thursday the 10th of March uh, at the Underdog on White Ave um, for our comedy taping would be really cool. And then if not, there is so much comedy happening here in Edmonton. Sundays, uh, the Druid or the Empress. Uh, Wednesdays at the Rouge Lounge or Devaney's. Mondays at Woody's Video Bar. Thursdays at the Underdog. I could go on. So any, pretty much anywhere where there's a public address system and a semi-willing audience, you will find me trying to tell some jokes. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, that's pretty much about it. Uh, I want to go through a couple little events that are happening uh, that are on our calendar. Uh, we have the Pop Culture Fair that's happening on March 13th. Uh, so that's coming up this weekend. This I think it's on Sunday. Uh, and then Happy Harbor has got their scotch tasting uh, that's happening <gasps> on March 26th. 
Can so, I finally go to that one? I've Jay has been trying to get me to go to those for ages, and I've always wanted to because my fourth love is scotch. Um, <laughs> but I've always been busy, so I'm gonna to have scotch. Is a very I'm gonna have to love. see if I can get to that. I'm glad you filmed me. Much like this uh, Aperture Science game, you've uh, you've been lighting me to something I've been grossly unaware of. <laughs> well, yes, scotch tasting is one of those things where I. I, I keep seeing it every every time he does it, and I'm like, oh, I gotta go to that. I really, I really want to try it. I know Jay's asked me to come out a couple times, and I'm like, oh, I want to go. But yeah, so that is happening on March 26. Uh, and then uh, the following month on April, we have uh, Gob Fest, which is the local board game uh, festival on April 10th. And then later on uh, in April, we have the Calgary Expo. So and we will be down there. We will have a bunch of stuff leading up to that. So it's going to be exciting. So yeah, that's all I'm gonna I'm gonna do for tonight. Uh, you guys, whoever is out there listening, uh, you guys can find us, the Northerner Network, on the web. Uh, we have an, our own Facebook or uh, website, uh, northernerdnetwork.com. You guys can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash northernerdnetwork. Facebook at facebook.com slash northernerd. And on Twitter at northern underscore nerd. And that is or northern, northern network underscore network. Sorry. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> so uh, many places all over the web. All so over the web. You go, you'll find us. You'll find us somewhere. We're, we're all over the place. So that is pretty much it. I want to thank everybody out there for watching or listening or whatever you're doing. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. For Thanks for having me, guys. All right. That's it. Thank you. Friday next week. <laughs> <laughs>